said go. Hi, welcome to Transparent Talk. I'll be your host for today, Heather Weigel, and these are my two guests, uh, Student Body President Ethan Smith. Hi. And Student Body Vice President Hadra Abuzair. Nice to see you. <laughs> Nice to see you too. <laughs> so um, what are your guys' majors? I think um, the student body needs to kind of just know who you are as a person before we get into the nitty gritty about your roles, so. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I have two, <coughs> two majors, economics and political science. I focus more on the international affairs side, but I think both of those things have helped me out a lot in being student body president. Right on, and yourself? So I'm a biology major, uh, pre-med path, and then I have a minor in religious studies. Yep. Interesting. <laughs> so, Two polar um, opposites. yeah, how do you use that in your role? As vice president? Yeah, as vice president. Um, well, I think in general, the science major, any science major is going to be a lot of work, right? So it's a lot of, I guess, balancing. And um, since I am pre med, I'm trying to incorporate a little bit more about like morals and ethics. And I mean, that's, I guess, that's where it comes in for things like being student body. Vice President. Yeah. But. Right on. And, and uh, do you mind if I actually jump in on that point? Because I was just going to say it's, I've really appreciated being able to run with and work with Azure because the more representative any governing body is, the more legitimate it is. So what we don't want to see, I, I love, you know, political science. I'm proud to be a political science major. But if everyone is in government, was only representing those disciplines, then we wouldn't be able to represent the students um, as well as we can with having people like Hajar as part of student government too. Right. Um, so Hajar, actually, that was part of your appeal during the campaign that you were an outsider, you didn't have a lot of uh, student government experience. Do you think that has actually helped you in your role as vice president? Yeah, I think that's definitely helped me only because I'm coming into this project fresh, right? So people who are already in student government um, maybe don't have a different perspective coming in because they've already worked with the people in student government. But um, I came in, I've never been in student government before. This is my first year doing it. So I really had a lot of new, I think I had a lot of new fresh ideas um, that I want to incorporate. But. Right, um, could you speak to that a little bit? Yeah, I mean, I think, I think Hedger's definitely brought a fresh perspective. With me being a little bit more experienced in student government, I think that's where you really get the best of both worlds because I had yeah. um, an understanding of exactly the scope of the sort of thing that student government can accomplish and how to get them done. And Hajj was able to bring new ideas of things to get done to the table. So I think when you put those two things together, um, it's a really powerful combination. Right. You guys also ran on um, giving the student body more of a seat in more of like a a place to stand in the conversation of where our administration's going, like how student affairs get handled. So what have you done to kind of bring students to the table? Sure. Um, I think really the key to making sure that students' voices are represented, that students are at the table, is taking advantage of the um, seats that we are given. So for example, um, student government is invited to present to the Board of Regents committees um, at the Student Affairs Committee and we traditionally sign up for the full board meetings. Really showing up in that space and making sure that you <coughs> make the best use of your time is something that I think we've been doing a really good job with this year. Um, at the, the last board meeting we were able to have a very comprehensive presentation at the Student Affairs meeting and then we were able to fully um, flesh that out in sort of a document that even though we couldn't get it done in our three minutes that they give you at the Board of Regents meeting, we were able to really um, go the extra mile, make sure we wrote out some really concrete recommendations and um, backed it up with some numbers and give it to them that way. Right on. Yeah, and I mean, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> no, I agree with Ethan. I think just like for me personally, um, bringing a diverse perspective to Eastern Michigan University, because our, our population is so, so diverse, being able to represent that as a student and as student body vice president is really important to us. I think not just only like showing up to these meetings, but I mean, we love Eastern, right? Like we're not trying to, we're not here trying to roast East, uh, Eastern, but just questioning things when they aren't right 
because I mean that's our job as students is to try to get our equal rights um, at this university while we're here. Right, and that's especially your job when you serve as a liaison between the student body and between the administration, right? Right. Yeah, so I would kind of sum up your guys' platform last year based on like three key points. So sustainability, diversity, and security. Um, could you speak a little on, on how your platform has kind of sh um, formed how you've managed your position? Do you want to go? Oh, oh you're, you're giving it to me. I'm well, handing it to you, and <coughs> then I'll come back. <laughs> okay. I'm going to start with um, security, because I think security is number one for us now, and it was number one in the campaign. And what we mean yeah. by that is making sure that students aren't really in un unstable situations, insecure situations, where they don't know where the next meal is coming from, where they don't know um, if they're in a, a stable housing situation. So we, we've really um, put a lot of emphasis in that. Um, we were advocating on behalf of Swiss Pantry expanding into more of a space because they're having difficulty um, meeting their, their demands. They have the financial support that they need, but um, they, they could use more space to have stuff on stock. So that's, that's an avenue that we've pursued. Um, the, the wonderful um, millions of dollars gift, it was $3.5 million, $1.5 for students from the um, Game Above alumni group. Um, we were really grateful to have the opportunity to sort of correspond with some of those donors and make those security priorities um, at the <coughs> forefront. And that led to some of these issues like student houselessness getting um, singled out as places where they wanted that money to go. So that would be um, my number one answer to that because that was our number one thing. So that's, that's yeah. thousands of dollars, hundreds of thousands of dollars that we're <coughs> helping students. Wonderful. And um, I think, yeah, a little bit to add on to that, I think what we've really been focusing on this year is basic needs in general. So just making sure that students are fed and how, like, have housing security on this campus so that they can go to class and they can concentrate. Um, I think everyone is at this university because they're trying to build a better life for themselves. And so just saying um, because you can't afford housing or food that you shouldn't be here is just wrong. So just making sure that students feel secure in their basic, basic needs. Basic needs. I mean, we're not, as a school, we're not the most financially secure students, so um, making sure those things are met. But our top priorities have been that this year. Hey, uh, what programs do you think have really um, driven that home, you know, like? Yeah, so like Ethan mentioned, um, the emergency fund, that's been something that we know students have been needing for a while. Um, Everyone has bad situations. Everyone has rough patches. So being able to say, here's, what is it, $750 that you can have and you can keep it and hopefully this will help you help get you out of that rut um, has been one of our huge programs. And supporting swoops too as well, as best as we can. Yeah, and there was also a campus sleep out um, that kind of showed the need for addressing the homelessness problem on campus. Right, and so, I think what we often don't realize is that housing and security is things like sleeping on your friend's couch because you have nowhere to be, right. or just not having an apartment of your own, wondering where you're going to sleep at night, um, and that sort of thing. So that sleep out You was, don't have to literally be sleeping right, outside, yeah. Right, on the streets, like homelessness has many faces. So that, I think that sleep out really concentrated um, on those points. And, Hopefully, the university will continue to take action when it comes to housing and security. Awesome. Um, could you speak to the diversity part of your platform? Yeah, I was, I was just about to say that. So the first thing that I would say about that is not to belabor the point, but one, basic security, it's intersectional, right? So Absolutely. you have to think about the fact that of all the students that are going to find themselves in those situations, statistically, an African-American student is more at risk, a um, Hispanic student is more at risk, and a female student is more at risk. Um, I don't remember the study that I came from, but one, that's intuitive, but two, that's, that's a hard fact. So that's one thing that we have to keep in mind. What we've really focused on from the diversity standpoint when it comes to advocacy um, through the ad administration is focusing on equitable student support and retention. So a major theme of that presentation to the Board of Regents that I was talking about was calling for an expansion of programs like 
brotherhood and sisterhood that target um, students of color and encourage them, connect them to community resources in an effort to make sure that they're able to proceed to graduation. Those programs are wonderful and they work. The issue is that they serve a relatively small cohort. So expanding those sorts of services to either or more of a walk-in model or just a model that's acceptable to more students um, of, of, of all groups, but particularly the ones that can benefit from it the most, um, that's something that we've really been pushing for very strong, and I think um, they're seeing a need for that. Right. And uh, part of the, um, the diversity push was also making sure the international students had um, like a cohesive voice. Right. Um, could either of you actually speak to? Yeah. So, yeah, we, we have been t in touch with the International um, Student Org on campus. We've been meeting with the president and trying to figure out ways where we can help them with, our, with their events. So just being there um, and helping with their responsibilities is something that we've been really involved in. Yeah, there's, um, there's a program that was done in collaboration between the International Student Association and student government, I believe two years ago, and it was called Around the World in One Day. The intention of this is to make um, a big showcase of the cultures that we have at Eastern Michigan mm -hmm. University and put our domestic students in touch with that it's coming up, so right? that they can see um, what, what we have to offer as a global community. So we've been partnering on that. Um, we're really excited. We're, we're experimenting with the way of allocating funding for different cultural presentations and giving different groups um, a budget. So I think there's a lot of creativity that we'll be able to stimulate and I think that's something that will be really cool. Fair. Right on. And we are about to have <coughs> a quick commercial break. We will be right oh. back to talk about the rest of your platform just in like one minute here. All right, cool. Sounds so, good. yeah. Right, and we are back with Transparent Talk. Um, we were just talking about some of the staples of your guys' platform last year, and I wanted to talk about sustainability next. So take it away, Ethan. Yeah, I think sustainability to me, I mean, even just the dictionary definition, it means that you're able to <coughs> perpetuate in the future, that what you're doing, you're going to be able to keep doing for an elongated period of time. So to me, when you say sustainability, the first thing that my mind goes to is, are we spending money on the things that's going to allow Eastern Michigan University to be successful and um, accomplish its core academic mission long into the future? And when I ask that question, I'm challenged by some things like the investment that we recently put into the, the football um, facility, the gorgeous facility um, on the end zone. 
it's, it's a wonderful facility, but is it an investment that is going to make Eastern Michigan University as sustainable as it can possibly be? I think I would echo um, previous student body president Miles Payne in saying, in saying no. I think that um, we really need to hold firm to keeping the university to its commitment or the athletics department to its commitment to um, fundraise all of the university dollars that would be going into that project or the majority of the um, fundraising dollars, make sure that they meet their initial target. Um, I don't support really the fact that the university put as much of its own capital dollars into that project as it did. That's a position in line with um, previous student body presidents. And just moving forward when it comes to sustainability, I think to build a sustainable athletics program and to build a sustainable EMU, um, future capital improvements to athletics should be 100% donor funded. Right. Um, would you say the privatization efforts as well would factor into the conversation about sustainability? I think so. I think when it comes to privatization and sustainability, you have to be very cautious about what kind of deals you're making because talk about sustainability, we're talking about an extremely long period of time with some of the deals that we're talking about. So the, the parking deal, I believe, was for 40 years. It's a long time. If we're not careful about making that sort of partnership, that's removing a revenue stream from the university and it's taking it out of our hands. So it makes it hard to anticipate um, the situations that we'll, we'll be in. It takes away some of our flexibility. That's not to say that such partnerships are always a bad thing, but you have to keep in mind, one, um, your core objectives. You have to be very careful about what you're planning to do. You have to keep um, students in mind, or at least we do, because that's our job. So I think you, you can't really make an arrangement like that sustainable if you're not putting the, the people that are going to be affected first. Absolutely. And you actually made a point of that in um, your argument in the ECHO for um, the privatization of housing. Um, do you see any, any part of that playing a factor into what the current conversation on that is? I, I would say yes. I think that's been um, very influential in um, kind of crystallizing a student perspective on that issue. Um, I think as conversations continue to move forward on that topic, um, continued input is always going to be um, necessary and useful, but I think that was successful in getting across what elements would need to be in any kind of partnership like that. And um, I don't think they've found a partnership at this time that would meet all of those. So um, that's why, to my knowledge, there hasn't been any movement on it. Gotcha. And another element of sustainability is actually like biodiversity on campus. Um, you made this a point in one of the previous um, ECHO articles, actually, where you were talking about the rocks on <laughs> campus and how maybe that's not quote. so sustainable as, <laughs> yeah. um, as maybe growing our own plants and stuff that can be sold right. can be um, distributed at swoops and stuff like that. Right. And so, yeah, like when I think of sustainability, that's initially what I think of, right? Um, I think of the fact that as an administration, we can retain students better by doing things that are good for the students and that aren't like necessarily just for show. Like things like th that building that you were just talking about for the football, that's that's not going to retain students. What's going to retain students is having their basic needs met on campus. So things like using your space wisely um, and paying for things that will actually help students. And I mean, rocks, I mean, they're, I'm they're, not gonna say they're, they're nice. They're nice. They're they're nice. Okay. I mean, they're all right, they're, they're, they're nice. all right, right? But can you imagine if we actually use that space to like grow food for people on campus? That would be amazing, stuff like that. So we've been partnering with like the Giving Garden and trying to figure out different ways that we can incorporate like healthy food initiatives on campus, growing food on campus, that sort of thing. All right. Um, so <laughs> that would probably help with the demand in Swoops, right? Exactly, yeah. And so actually Swoops does have their own little garden during the summer. It's really cute. Ethan and I visited it. but And they have access to some fresh produce yeah, too, so yeah. They get that as well, but um, it would be cool to say that we grew it ourselves on campus and that Swoops has, had, Swoops has those materials available, so. Right. So uh, what other programs has student government been working on that you have really loved seeing grow this year? 
Yeah, um, one that I'm really proud of is we partnered with Digital Inclusion in um, the Engage EMU office. Digital Inclusion is a nonprofit that offers low cost um, electronics and electronic repairs, um, really to the entire community, but we've helped them sort of grow their operation focusing on EMU students specifically. And what we've been able to do in partnership with them is offer free computer repairs to um, any student that comes into the student government office or um, yeah, that, that comes into the student government office. We'll just take down their info in a spreadsheet and we'll give them a coupon. They can go to digital um, inclusion in Boone Hall and they can get their computer repaired at zero cost to them. So digital inclusion um, offered discounted repairs before. We teamed up with them. We were able to get that discount down to um, completely free. And that's something that we've been really, really excited because that's, um, that's something can get, that can really be a barrier for students. Right. Is there any other program that you would uh, point to? Yeah. <laughs> something that I'm excited for personally. Um, I'm working on my fourth year of planning the Arab American Heritage Festival. So that's something that we'll be collaborating with the Honors College with. And um, this is my like pet project. This is my baby, right? So <laughs> making, <laughs> like being able to incorporate student government into such an event, I think will make the event more wide or widespread on campus, more well known. Um, just in general, <clears throat> being more cognizant of trying to incorporate all the diverse populations on campus, um, that sort of thing, this event, as, I mean, specifically for Arab Americans, but anyone can come through. Um, so that'll be coming up in April. <laughs> I bet yeah, it's yeah. good. It's a good time. You should, yep. you should all go. Yeah, Got to so. plug it a little bit, right? Yeah, I'm plugging it right now. Come through. It's going to be lit. <laughs> we should do this like Letterman style, you yeah. know, where you bring people on the show if they have something to promote. <laughs> That's all we're doing right now. <laughs> That's <laughs> yeah. exactly I'm what we're doing, know. I guess. <laughs> um, so are there any programs that you wish to see grow? after your time in student government that are kind of maybe in the planning process right now or have just been an idea? What do you think? I think there's a project that we're in the beginning of stages of now that I hope will continue. There are, there are a couple ways I can answer that, but I'll start with the first one that I thought of. Um, what we are hoping to do is really lean on the organizations that have done such a good job in getting diversity related programming together like the latinx student association like the muslim student association like um naacp and bsu we have a lot of really active really great organizations that put on diversity related programming what we're hoping to do is as student government get those groups together and create some sort of um council or commission or just some sort of organizational structure um, where we can encourage those organizations to collaborate on events and then match or otherwise contribute student government funding so that we can leverage the networks that already exist as opposed to trying to do it all yeah. ourselves. Because if we can build that infrastructure, I think that creates a lot of opportunities for cross-cultural dialogue. Um, we're in our earlier early stages of, of doing that. We just brought on a new diversity um, um, director of diversity and community outreach, and that's something that she's going to be working on. Um, but we're really excited to start building that infrastructure, because even if that doesn't come to full fruition this year, I think that's something that could pay really big dividends down the road. Yeah, and I think a physical manifestation of that is we're trying to get as many different leaders on campus to be delegates in student government. Yep. Um, to represent the student voice, to be able to vote on student issues. So that's coming up. <laughs> Beautiful. Um, do you have any recommendations for your successors? Um, you know, the oh. election will be coming up next semester, so. It feels like we just started. <laughs> <laughs> um, any recommendations? Yeah. Yeah, I think having good intentions when you're running, um, not to just run because you want to be student body vice president or because you want to be student body president, run because you actually feel like you can make a change. So that's what, that's what these positions have entitled us to do is we've been able to grow and help other students. Um, and that's why we're, we're not here for our own selfish reasons. We're really actually here to give a voice to the student body. So making sure that you keep that in mind. Right. And I'll say if that is what you were trying to do, you're not going to have a good time. Yep. Like it's honestly, right. you yes. have to really want to be there to do the job um, or else 
you honestly might regret it because it's it's a big commitment, um, but it's an extremely rewarding thing to do. Yeah. So if you're really serious about running, I guess my biggest advice would be to start early, start mm -hmm. not campaigning, but building relationships before the campaign starts. Um, so people know who you are, people can see that you're sincere. Yeah. And, and I think yeah. that's what that's what we really hit home with is we had a lot of we, we were in, involved in a lot of um, different orgs on campus and we were already connected with the, the student body. So us running was just one more pedestal on the left. I guess. That makes sense. One <laughs> <laughs> well, more wrong on Sorry. the left. I don't know. One more wrong maybe, yeah. Um, but <coughs> I would say that's what leadership is, right? It's like helping other people grow. It's not, it's not supposed to be for selfish reasons. Right, so. and, it's, and it's has to outlast you. It has to outlast you if it's gonna be, make a real difference. Uh, so what do you think your legacy will be? Our goal, and I think we've been successful, we still have some more months to do this, is to focus the mission of student government on students' fundamental needs. I mean, I think it's a good thing that we sound like a broken record because that was our whole objective, is to refocus that conversation and really have a very intentional mindset whenever student government makes a financial decision about spending money is, is this money going to be better spent than if it was going right to the hands of a student that really needs it. I think the emergency fund is a really great example of that. I think that's something that even once Ethan and I leave, people will be able to say that was our administration that did that, and hopefully that will continue on throughout the years. Right. Uh, that's pretty much all we have today. Um, thank you for joining you gang. Thank you. On, on the <laughs> show. Um, it's great to have you. Nice to see you. Yep, and you as well. <laughs> thank you. Thanks a lot. Okay, make sure you got it right.